Chemistry is, well, technically chemistry is the study of matter, but I prefer to see it as the study of change. When Breaking Bad wrapped in 2013, it not only left a gaping hole in our hearts, Netflix cues, and Sunday evenings, but it also left us seriously devoid of our post-high school science lessons. See also Bill Nye and Magic School Bus videos. While Vince Gilligan's cult classic on mainstream hit is known for its unique cinematography, subtle character development, and recurring symbols and themes, its actual scientific credibility did leave just a bit to be desired. The show can serve as a far more exciting stand-in for actual scientific principles. Though, if you came here hoping to learn the difference between a rock and a mineral, you'd have to wait for Earth science because the topic of the day is chemistry. So get ready to learn something, guys, because I'm Johnny with Cinematica and we're counting down the 11 best chemistry lessons from Breaking Bad. Let's get started! Number 11. Atomic Structure Atoms are the building blocks of all the known everything and take center stage in chemistry. There are three main parts of an atom. Protons, a positive charge, electrons, a negative charge, and neutrons, the neutral charge. The varying amounts of each are what make an element an element. So what does this have to do with Breaking Bad? Well, in the same way that atoms have the distinctive characteristics, show creator Vince Gilligan has meticulously crafted the show's character roster to be just as distinct. From color schemes to character quirks as they are the core building blocks of Breaking Bad. That meant a lot of time with the production and costume designers nailing down every microscopic detail. He says it himself, he sweats the small stuff, perhaps even the subatomic stuff. Number 10. Catalysts and Inhibitors Okay, so now you have all your atoms and you're waiting for a reaction. Sometimes, to help the process along, chemists use what are called catalysts, which basically kickstart the activation energy needed to create the chemical reaction. Catalysts can function in several different ways, sometimes making molecules combine and sometimes causing a single molecule to shift its structure, sometimes even carving out a new pathway entirely. When you look at Breaking Bad, the catalyst is clear. Walt is diagnosed with cancer and instantly a flame is lit under his ass to provide whatever money he can for his family before his demise. Inhibitors then do the opposite of catalysts. They slow the reaction. Looking at you, Skyler. Number 9. Conservation of Mass the law of the conservation of mass states that, in chemical reactions, mass is never gained nor lost. It's just transformed from beginning to end from one state to another. Yes, science! That idea of transformation, the internal realignment of one thing into something else, is the foundation of Breaking Bad's storyline. Vince Gilligan famously pitched the show as having a lead who changes from Mr. Chips to Scarface. For further application of the chemical law, look no further than Walt's hair. It isn't lost, just transformed from a scruffy middle-aged teacher do to a gruff drug kingpin goatee. What's interesting is a man with no facial hair is less intimidating than a man with facial hair, and a man who is bald is more intimidating than a man with hair. Quote Brian Cranston. I am the one who knocks. Number 8. Chain Reactions Skylar, I have lived under the threat of death for a year now, and because of that, I've made choices. I alone should suffer the consequences of those choices, no one else. And those consequences, they're coming. No more prolonging the inevitable. Cause and effect plays a major role on the show, and one of the most notable examples is the build-up to season two's finale. Jane overdoses, and Walt chooses to let her die, thereby devastating her father, an air traffic controller, whose grief prevents him from stopping two planes from colliding over Albuquerque. In chemistry, this is called a chain reaction, when the product of one chemical reaction becomes a reactant in the following reaction. Number 7. Bonding Atomic bonding works in basically the same way as bonding with friends. There's a little empty part of you, and that part needs to be filled by finding someone to hang out with and make watch all the same shows as you. With an atom, that empty part is called a shell and can be filled by the excess electrons of a second atom. When Malt first starts to break bad, his alliance with Jesse is based on that principle of bonding. As a chemist, Walt can cook meth but not sell it, and as a street punk, Jesse can sell meth but not cook it. But you know the business, and I know the chemistry. I'm thinking, maybe you and I could partner up. Effectively, their mutual dependence fosters that sort of bond, which, if we're getting real specific, would be a bond, covalent bond. Number 6. The Periodic Table of Elements Chances are you probably had to memorize the periodic table in high school, or at least some of it, or at least you've seen it, or someone mentioned it to you in some sort of unfortunate desperate small talk. What, whatever the case may be, the cross-section of the periodic table in Breaking Bad lies in the periodicity, the important signifier of patterns. The show is ripe with it, and you can see it in everything from the black and white sequence of season 2 to the uncanny resemblance between Gus Fring and the pink teddy bear and even the recurring motive of the bacon numbers on Walter's birthday. Oh, and if you want to be literal about it, the periodic table is literally built into the show's name and credits. So, uh, study up, I guess? Number five. 
Redox, oxidation and reduction. Breaking Bad is filled with Easter eggs and fan theories, but one of the coolest revolves around Walt adopting the traits of the people that he's killed. Some examples? Crazy 8 took a sandwich as Sans crust, and we later see Walt mimicking that preference. After Gus goes, we see Walter cushioning his knees from the bathroom floor with a little towel, something Fring used to do as well. Lastly, when Walt murders Mike, he starts to take his whiskey on the rocks, whereas that didn't used to be the case. Remember earlier how I mentioned that the atomic structure of the characters are their little quirks and characteristics? That makes Walt's obtainment of these traits a lot like a redox reaction, wherein an atom can be oxidized and lose an electron, or reduced and gain an electron. Number 4. Quantum Theory and Heisenberg's Uncertainty Principle Ever wonder where Walt got the name Heisenberg from? In the magical world of science, Werner Heisenberg was a German physicist known for his uncertainty principle, but more on that in just a sec. First, quantum theory. In a nutshell, quantum theory is used to explain the behavior of matter at its subatomic and atomic levels. It was conceptualized by Max Planck, who determined that matter breaks down into particles, not waves, and is therefore quantifiable. Later, Heisenberg introduced his uncertainty principle as a way of saying, that's cool, Max, but particles are still crazy as he pointed out, the more precisely the position is determined, the less precisely the momentum is known. One of my favorite parts of Breaking Bad is the way that Walt steadily escalates his sins throughout the course of the show, and as viewers, we don't really notice. We're pretty much along for the ride until the end of season 4 when he poisons Brock behind our backs. Suddenly we discover that dissonance between Walt's position and momentum, and sure enough, it's crazy as shit. Number 3. Kinetic Molecular Theory Now, this is kinetic theory, not connect theory. No amount of theorizing can explain Xbox's insistence on its motion controller, but kinetic theory can explain observable motion. The theory states that the observable behaviors of gases are a direct result of the unobservable movements of the particles that compose them. In Breaking Bad, a lot of the micro-level motives are only visible in macro form. One of the ways that Gilligan shows us this is with the characters' wardrobes. Skylar, Jesse, Hank all start out wearing bright colors, but as the series goes on and situations turn grimmer, they are corroded into bleaker shades. Like kinetic theory, we can see how the international emotional turmoil has a bearing on their external appearances. Then there's Marie, who is basically just purple forever. Number 2. Acids and Bases In the golden age of television, Breaking Bad was known for epitomizing the shades of grey moral values seen in shows like The Sopranos or Mad Men. These shows blurred lines between good and evil, turning their characters' alignments into a fluid spectrum. Much like the pH scale, the chemical spectrum is used by scientists to plot substances based on whether they are more acidic, like vinegar, or more basic, like a pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> You can use the same idea to plot the characters from Breaking Bad. Gus Fring? Very acidic. Walt Jr.? So basic. Saul Goodman? Neutral. Number 1. Entropy Entropy isn't exactly a basic scientific principle, since an adequate explanation of it would require the use of terms like thermodynamic and mechanical work and thermal energy conversion, and I'm not about that life. The more common way to simplify it is to say that it's the fate of all things to slip into disorder, the trend from bad to worse. The universe is random, it's not inevitable, it's simple chaos, it's subatomic particles and endless aimless collision. Look, science isn't pretty, and we knew all along Breaking Bad wouldn't be so pretty by the end either. For a lesson on entropy, look no further than Ozymandias, considered one of the best episodes of anything ever. The third to last episode of the show sees Walt losing his empire, his money, his family, his health. It's the total degradation that one can expect from entropy and ultimately pays the way for Walt's death. Yes, science! Thank you guys for watching the 11 best chemistry lessons from Breaking Bad. Which principle did you learn today? Would you add another one? Let us know in the comments, and remember to like the video and subscribe to Cinematica, where we help you watch smarter.